Hey, yeah, I'm Duck Manny. Uh, so, got one of the superstars of the stalwarts with me now. Uh, Brett BJ Lamont. BJ, how you going? Good, thank you, mate. Uh, superstars a stretch. Yeah. So, so uh, I've heard all the stories like you parted the Red Sea and all this stuff and uh, the two blues on a sneeze and you brought it all around. <laughs> how's, how's that going? How's, how's the stalwarts going? How did it kick about that you're running that and what, what's your goal with the stalwarts because it's really kicked on in the last 12 months? Mate, it has kicked on big time due to the fact that uh, just having conversations uh, when we moved out of uh, what Granville Park that was getting redeveloped, we got down to Lincoln Oval, sat there, had a few beers. There was a SOS went in RSA Marshall, me working for the TAB. Thought, yeah, cool, I can sit there and do what I normally do, talk a lot of BS. <laughs> deal out some beers and then just got talking to uh, Tomo and Tomo says look there is this that 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 and I went I maybe be able to do something with that yeah. and we are now at, what 176 uh, stores uh, 52 paid up financial uh, foundation members and my, my goal technically is to just keep on building 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 so it's a massive deal to have a stalwarts. Like if you look at most clubs, most sporting clubs, they have supporter clubs. So effectively, you're a supporters club that is tying in the former players and people like that and people that love the club want to support it and give them an opportunity and a way to do that. I'd love to, mate. Look, let's uh, face it. You, you, you talk to guys who are hillbillies. Perfect opportunity. Like, you know, these guys are absolute lunatics. As uh, crazy as the uh, stalwarts are, I'd love to have those numbers, etc., etc. I mean, look, if you want to be part of a stalwarts, it's all about stepping up, whether it being what you pay is entirely up to you, membership wise. But look, it's just bums about on seats, getting you to clubs, uh, getting to home games. Now, look, the two blues are starting to do some great things. I'd love a lot more wins. I'd, you know, but you know, it's about juniors engaging. You've talked, you've talked to uh, Timmy Shand, our El Presidente of the Juniors Club. Uh, you know, next five, ten years for me is all about trying to build. Um, where we go from here, you know, you're going to speak to Peter Cole or Coley, as everyone knows him as, and a lot of blokes are going to start stepping down due to the fact of age. And it's all, it's a young man's game, and we've just got to try and build a club. It's progression, isn't it? You're constantly building and not rebuilding, but you want to build for the future and set up so that we're, we're just caretakers of uh, entities, so of like the stalwarts, and you want other people to be able to take that on and kick down on another level, really, isn't it? Oh, look, Duckman, you know these things. I mean, look, you commentate on a lot of sports and a lot of arenas, and... Well, the clubs who are lucky enough to get you along there, I mean, look, you've got to, you've got to, me personally, mate, I'm 53. Do, do you think I'm going to be doing this in 10, maybe, maybe 10 years? I don't know. I, I, I can't say that health-wise, et cetera, et cetera. Things happen, but I would like to think that uh, the next generation are going to stump up and you know, love our club. Do what the Tupelies used to be. I mean... I listen to stories from the old guys, you know, Tomo, GJ, you know, I mean, you're going to do interview with them, Coley and stuff like that. I mean, these guys are a lot older, and I, I, I think the Camptons, the Leeds, the Tartuthus, the, you know, the list is huge. I mean, you know, I'm only going to be here, you know, let's, let's be honest, for another 10, maybe 15, 20 years. I'm not, I'm not a young man like uh, Timmy Shand. And, and certainly yourself. I mean, I'm not going to be here forever, mate. I mean, Jesus. I could be a ger geriatric and they mightn't let me out. But while I can, I'd, I'd, like to I'd like to start something and I'd like to plan something in people's ears that say that, uh, you know, this is a club that's worth being here. I mean, I love everything. Everyone I know, the Holmans, the Camptons, the Leeds, the, you know, the list just is on and on and on and on. I mean, you know, yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your rugby career? You started off with Eastwood, didn't you? Actually, I started off with uh, the uh, Macquarie Boys 
Interesting story. Yeah, I know. Played against Papworth, all of this, Eastwood, Parramatta Tubeless, Parramatta Eels. I mean, you know, it's just been on and on. Then I retired and, like, as I said, I'm 53. I mean, some of the young blokes just sit there go, I'm surprised. They sit there go, I can't believe you're that old. My body tells you that I'm old. I'm that old. Like, you know, some stories I could tell you. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit baffled myself. But, yeah, look, I'm here. All I know is I'm part of the Tubblers. I'd like to see some great things happen. Yeah. So that, I really feel like they're going forward in uh, leaps and bounds, in particularly this season, after the last couple of years. Had some slim pickings the last few years. So uh, this, this season was a big <laughs> season. Obviously, 2023 got big things in store as well. Well, Duck Bean, you've been around rugby for a little, you know, been subbies, shoot shield, stuff like that. You speak to a lot of people. Look, um, to just miss out on first grade for um, first, the shoot shield uh, grand finals and stuff like that. Well, then you move into subbies and stuff like that. Look, I believe if we can get, just get a following. Back in the old days, the 80s, 70s, or 70s, 80s, 90s, it's just going to be a different club. And it's all about people stepping up and having a crack. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the area is a great area, so you're targeting the right area and you're, you're doing it the right way. So building a plan to it as opposed uh, to a scatter a scattergun attack. So building a plan for it, like a business plan, which is going to make it much more successful than just going off to see to your pants, going off cuff and seeing how it goes. Well... Duck Ben, look, you've been around sport and you, you've interviewed like people who have done this sort of thing. I mean, look, I'm just the ugly mug that sits there and going, Brett Lamont, BJ Lamont, I mean, you look, you're, with, you're part of the store. So I went, yeah, because I'm that ugly. <laughs> people don't forget. And, like, you know, look, whether it be right or wrong, I think it's right. But at the end of the day, look, it is a iconic club. It has been around since, like, you know, 1879. We can do fantastic things, but it's going to take people to put aside what they felt before and then moving forward and just going, it is what it is. Yeah. Do we want our club to be as good as... What are we going to leave for the future? And that's essentially, look, at 53, it's important, I think so. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So that's what look through. So got some very talented people in, within the club. Look, Tim Shan, look at him. Uh, he's, a, he's a future leader of the whole football club overall. So he's got his head in the right place and he's doing all the right stuff. Sensible approach to everything. He's not trying to change the universe in one day, so which is a good step forward as well. Well, you know, young Rogan, um, El Presidente, you've got, um, you know, Christian Burton doing a great job. Um, we've just got to, yeah, Solosi, Basra, um, you know, Liam Winton, stuff like those. We've just got to, um, oh, my opinion, and uh, looking from the outside in, these gentlemen are doing good things, and, you know, we've got our Colts come along, and it's got to be a, I think it's got to be a full club thing, and the way I said, looking after all the stalwarts, um, you know, a lot of people are this, that, everything else. My thing is, you want to be part of it, buy a membership, do something, do anything, standing on the fence doesn't help anyone yeah so what's a membership cost if someone just wants to be like a casual member and can't turn up to all the games what's that worth what's it cost if you want to turn up all the time and be a passionate vocal fence lean and beer drinking member well me me, me personally um <laughs> don't ask the missus mate but um there's my foundation membership that's 110 bucks a, a season but like what i spend at the club i see that as uh reinvesting in the club yeah. one bitter at a time a 40 beers every home game, but um, let's not uh, get involved with Uber because, quite frankly, I'm pretty sure what I'm spending now is, you know, regardless. But, look, what it comes down to, look, a lot of people can talk, but unless you're willing to, me personally, dip into your pocket, mate, the rest is all talk. Yeah. I'm sorry. A lot of people mightn't agree with me, mate, but uh, me, my sister, my family... Uh, actually, when I'm talking about my family, and this is not the family that I bring to the rugby, but, you know, it, it costs them due to the fact that I'm not at home. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, that's the big thing. You can't get time back. But memories, you get memories. What's your greatest memory, actually, out of all your time in rugby? What's the funniest moment and probably your biggest highlight? Oh, jeez. For the two blues, literally. Um, <coughs> I'm at Macquarie Boys. We got some coach from Primary Two Blues, and they call him Kenny Clipboard, but it was actually Kenny Trockton. And he's come here, and Jumper Leeds, or Andrew Jumper Leeds, is started training with us uh, wearing a back paddock. This was extras, and that's why, uh, look, someone asked me, I said, well, there's only one reason uh, Andrew Leeds become a, um, a wallaby, mate, for the extras. And these are like Monday afternoons, and he's doing our work, and then he's staying late, extra. And I was sitting there going, you know, what, what does it take to be a wallaby? And besides the commitment, it's, it's the attitude. And me, look, clubs will come and go. Players will come and go, but uh, the people that stay at clubs, and that's, that's what make clubs. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, Brett. I'm sure we'll be catching up throughout the season. Got uh, Hopefully we'll get Eric Tweedale up for a chat oh. soon. So before Eric is uh, no longer with us, unfortunately, 103 years old now, so I am sure he has got a story or 25 to pass on as well. 25 is just the first day. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's an absolute pleasure. And Duckman, look, I look forward to seeing... Your career goes, but uh, you can't just seeing where the stalwarts go. Uh, Paramount of two blues, and you know, the Colts and juniors. Thank you very much for having me on. Absolutely, no worries. Thanks, Beach. I'll chat to you again soon. Pleasure, mate. Thank you. Always, always a pleasure. There you go, Brett BJ Lamont. He's a good chat. Loves a chat too. So uh, yeah. happy to tell. <laughs> <laughs> tells tells things how they are, which is uh, we need a bit more of in rugby as well. So, come on, sticking around, we'll try to get a couple more here.